Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, we'll have a Q&A video here today about the uh, video here from Wednesday. There's a few questions that I wanted to talk about, not too many I guess. Uh, I've got Ian here with me and Eli. Taryn's working today so they're with me. So there were some uh, questions about how long it takes us to feed and how many loads of feed we make. So we, uh, on a normal day we make nine loads of feed but it can be eight or ten. Uh, we feed our calves and our far off dry cows every other day and we try to plan it that it doesn't land on the same day but on occasion if uh, one of those two pens eats more than normal or if we want to clean the bunk out for whatever reason sometimes it'll fall on the same day but usually it'd be nine loads and uh, we st the, whoever is feeding if it's me or our, one of our other guys that feeds normally uh, they start at 5 o'clock in the morning uh, and then at uh, about noon they'll be finished with all the loads besides the last load for our high production cows so we feed our, all of our high production cows twice uh, and we do that load in the afternoon uh, and that includes uh, yeah, cleaning all the bunks for all the pens, uh, pushing up feed in the morning uh, and then yeah, the duties of the feeder after lunch would be to push feed after lunch at one o'clock and then again at three uh, and open up the silage or earlage piles if needed and open up the bales for tomorrow's feeding so it's basically it's an all-day job for for whoever is feeding uh, the, uh, what's that it's, it's Elvis Elvis feeds normally yeah, yeah that's right uh, was a few questions about what we use for a uh, program that's on that tablet and it's called Feed Supervisor. No more, Papa, no more. No more? Yeah. We, uh, we, so we also have that program on our computer in the office. Uh, all of our information for all of our pens are on that computer and we can make ration adjustments or add feeds, uh, take feeds out, uh, adjust dry matters. Uh, yeah, pretty much uh, anything to do with feeding or making changes to feeding we can do on our desktop and then we can transfer that over to the tablet and you can select all the pens, select the different rations, you can also adjust dry matters for feeds right there on the tablet uh, and adjust the amount of cows in each pen or the percent of feed that we're feeding each pen if they had too much or too little feed in the morning. The other uh, question that someone had posted was uh, about a self-loading feed wagon. Why we don't have a self-loading feed wagon. Uh, there's a few reasons. Uh, so for some of you that don't know what a self-loading feed wagon is, uh, the, you can either get a self-propelled self-loading feed wagon or a, sel a pull-type self-loading feed wagon. We had one of those in the Netherlands when we milked cows there. But basically, uh, instead of loading feed with a payloader like we do, you would drive up to the different uh, commodities, then the different piles of feed, and it loads itself with like a chopping head on the end, and it uh, either with a belt or with an auger, it runs it into the mixing wagon. Uh, the the few reasons why I don't think that's a good option for us at this point is uh, I really like the simplicity of the feed wagon that we have it's uh, just a PTO shaft and four hydraulic circuits that we're connecting to our tractor uh, we don't have a gearbox or a transmission on ours because uh, I like to keep things simple uh, it's the feed wagon we have is uh, very reliable it's really rare that we uh, have issues with it and that's really important for us because we want to make sure that our cows are fed on time every day. Watch out, Papa. Uh, Watch out. And that the other reason is uh, our size of feed wagon. They don't make a self-loading or a self-propelled feed wagon that size so we would have to go to a smaller loader which then would mean more we would have to make more loads of feed. Uh, this size mixer is about right for us. We, it's uh, for the milking cows. We make uh, what would be five full loads. So basically, as full as full as we can make it without spilling over what the top. Are you doing? Uh, so it's yeah, just about the right size for our farm. 
Uh, if we have to go to a smaller mixer, we would likely have to make six or maybe even seven loads. So that would add quite a bit of time to, uh, to the day for whoever is mixing the feed. And yeah, like I said, the simplicity of our wagon, if, if a tractor is broke down, you pull a pin and disconnect the PTO and the hoses and you grab another tractor. And if you have a self-propelled uh, feed wagon, you don't have that option. Then if you have an issue with it, you either have to go to a, a backup mixer or if you, uh, you have to fix your problem before you can use your feed wagon again. There was also some questions about uh, think about our rations I'd like to talk about that in next week's video kind of uh, sh show you guys all of the ingredients up close uh, talk about them and then uh, kind of talk about the different rations that we're feeding each group of cows I'm uh, yeah planning to have that uh, for Wednesday's video so you'll have to tune in for that one if you want to know a little bit more about uh, what we're feeding to our cows and what kind of di different mixes that we're feeding to the different groups of cows. So I think that'll be it for uh, today's video. Uh, appreciate you guys watching and yeah, I hope we'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Can you say bye-bye, Ian? Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.